with a round of applause. Join me as we welcome God's choice servant, my father, Apostle Michael Orobo. Find a man who fulfills ordination to his fullest. Something ancient will be at work in that man's life to bring certain levels of precision and accuracy to his life. Because if you lack wisdom, sometimes you empower your enemies. Sometimes you elongate the time of your manifestation. And so in order for you to keep pace with God's calendar, one of the things he fortifies you with is his wisdom. And that wisdom does not just come to your life to teach you what to say. It comes to your life to activate a divine product from you that even though your generation don't like you, they must need you. That's why you find that any man making impact and any man walking in ordination, there is always something unique about him. That's the workings of wisdom. Because wisdom comes to pioneer the possibility of inventions, witty inventions. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 12, quickly. I will be speeding now so that I'm able to list these things. God will give us deeper, deeper understanding. He said, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. These are inventions that cannot be ignored. These are inventions that are impactful. These are inventions that have the capacity to alter the course of a generation. He said, the power to bring about invention dwells with me. And so when God puts an ordination on a man's life, he interjects wisdom into it. When that man is talking, 10 people may have said that thing, but when you hear him say it, you hear it different. That's wisdom at work. The man enters the business world. People are trading, but he comes up with a strategy. And everybody seeks him. It's wisdom at work. That man enters the lab. Many persons have passed through that institution, but he creates something that for the next 10 years, people depend. It's wisdom at work. Anywhere you see novelty, creativity, inventions that impact lives and alter the course of destinies, know that wisdom is at work. And for a man to maximize ordination, one of the things God gives him is wisdom. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30, he said, for those who are in light, he said, Christ has been made unto us wisdom. So we have this wisdom beyond what we study. We have this wisdom because Christ is made unto us wisdom. This does not in any way negate the place of study. I spoke about it yesterday. But you see, there is something at work in your life that is bigger than your experiences, bigger than what you have studied, bigger than everything you have heard. It is Christ himself operating within you as a wisdom, giving you answers part time for all of the adversities that you face. Every man functioning in ordination, by all means, must be blessed with wisdom. Let me show you the excellency of wisdom. Proverbs 8, 22 to 31. We we'll just read it and hear what wisdom calls himself. And it shows you why if you have wisdom, you must make impact. And why it's a necessary ingredient for ordination. He said, the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old he said God possessed him go further he said I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was before anything was created wisdom said I was he said when there was no depth I was brought forth when there was no fountains abounding with water before the mountains were settled before the hills was I brought forth, I was brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest parts of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth, the deep, I was there. That's the excellency of wisdom. You see why a man who has wisdom becomes more ancient than everything you know. That's the power. He said, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthens the fountains of the deep. When he gave to the sea his decrees. And that water should not pass his commandment. When he appointed the foundations of the earth. I was there. He said then I was by him. 
as one brought up with him i was daily his delight rejoicing always before him so everything god created wisdom said he created it by himself and so if you will affect your generation and if your ordination must speak you must add value to your generation but the key to adding value is the operation of wisdom and so what god does benevolently is that he gives wisdom to them that are in him and so he said christ is made unto us wisdom now your job is to harness i'm showing you these things and showing you how to tap into them i told you for ordination you must discern and yield when it has to do with wisdom you have to ask he said him that lacketh wisdom should ask of him that giveth liberally and upbraided not he giveth liberally so when you confront anything don't depend on the name they call you i know they call you Odogu. i know they call you huge names you have a title but when you confront a situation make demand on wisdom lord what must i do lord how do i go about this suddenly something will break out of your spirit that is many times superior to what you were thinking and then you will discover that there is another side to your reality many have not tapped into wisdom that's why although they are correct today but what they did today that is correct will mar what is coming tomorrow because you can do something today that appears right but it has truncated your possibility in 10 years and so when you arrive at 10 years you will regret why you did that thing you did at the time you did it it looked right but 10 years later it became your, your 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 stumbling block and so no matter how simple it appears you live your life navigating by wisdom because the excellency the reason god cannot be wrong the reason god can never fail the reason god can never become obsolete is because god functions by wisdom everything god does remains relevant and will be relevant until god changes his mind say him that lacketh wisdom every day of your life ask for wisdom it's a gift god has given to you he made christ your wisdom your asking brings forth that operation and as you do that you discover you come into a superior realm of existence and people look at you and they marvel and then every year you are more relevant than you were and they are asking what are you doing i'm asking and the more i ask the more i become relevant the more I become impactful because I am spending from the intelligence of another. I know I studied, but I'm using the brain of God. I'm using the mind of God. And God is more knowledgeable than all the books the university I attended, the professors inclusive. So while I appreciate my mind and use it, I depend on something superior. I draw from the mind of God. That's why the Bible said we judge all things because we have the mind of Christ. God is not saying we should throw our minds away. I told you yesterday that you should use it, but your mind must be a gate to another mind. Draw from God. Never live life presumptuously. Never live life on the basis of assumption. Never live life on the basis of trends and what is popular. Always ask. And the more you ask, the wiser you become, the stronger you become, and you discover that your life beams out glory in different propensities your generation never tired of your existence the third thing god gives you is favor i've never seen a man who succeeded without favor i've never even the people who are most arrogant they if they are honest they will tell you there are interviews they went for that they were not the best there are contracts they bidded for that they saw companies that were bigger than them. There are people that fought them and they knew they were not their match. But somewhere, somehow, they came out victorious. It's an ingredient. When God wants to change a man's story, bring speed into a man's life and make a man impactful, he puts a fragrance on that man's life. That fragrance is called favor. Four things favor does quickly, I tell you. Number one, favor sponsors encounters. And you know, encounters are the spiritual possibilities that makes you live 
from the realms of God. Most encounters people have is because they found favor with God. And I give you just one scripture to support it. Luke chapter 1 verse 30. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Mary, in case Mary will make the mistake of saying, I'm a virgin. It makes her understand that there were many virgins in the land. She was not the only one. In case Mary makes the mistake of thinking I'm an intercessor, the angel quickly told her. He said, the angel said unto her, don't live here making any arrogant assertion. He said, fear not. He said, you have found favor with God. What will make a prince that stands in God's presence relocate to the earth realm is something that is bigger than your wisdom. It is only favor that can command that level of attention. That an angel can move a cherub move from God's presence. I don't know if you have been to God's presence and experienced him tangibly before. It is Hell is actually departure from God's presence. And an angel who has a place in God's presence won't leave it for anything. That's why when he came to Zachariah and Zachariah doubted him, he struck him with dumbness. Do, do you know what it cost me to come here? <laughs> I am Gabriel that standeth in the presence of God. Do you know what it cost me to leave God's presence? I'm talking to you. You are speaking English grammar. Be dumb. Be dumb. How, how dare you argue with me? I left God's presence to come here and talk to you. You know what I'm, I'm losing? It's not like a businessman who makes one million per minute. And then he comes to you, waits for one hour. Before you even discover he was there. Because the angel was standing. The man was too dumb to discern him. Until his eyes now opened. He saw that the angel was standing by the altar. I've spent so many un unknown time here that I should have been enjoying of the rivers that flow from the presence. And now I'm talking to you, still wasting time. And you are here arguing. Be dumb. God didn't ask me to do this one, but be dumb. Because it was not written anywhere that Zachariah had favor. The same question Zachariah asked was the same question Mary asked, but there was a difference. How shall these things be? For one, they say be dumb until the day happen. For another, they said the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. <laughs> the power of the highest shall overshadow you and that being that shall be formed in you shall be called the son of the highest. Do you see why some people break protocols? It's favor. Three people went for the interview. They said no, you came. And the person looks at you. Even the last person they denied answered better than you. But the person doesn't know why he just started smiling. Favor will activate the thought of his wife. And he will use his wife's face to answer you. And then you'll come out. They now ask you. The answer you gave was wrong. And they don't know why they choose you and ignore 20 people. It's called favor. Favor breaks protocols. And that's why favor sponsors encounters. The moment a man has favor, he enters the realms of encounters. Things that he doesn't deserve begins to come to him. And so when God wants to move a man forward, one of the agencies he mobilizes is favor. The second thing favor does is that favor commands the allegiance of men, including kings. Esther chapter 4 verse 16. Esther was supposed to go see the king. She said, this period I'm going, I am not on the timetable. He said, it's against the law. If you go, you will die. But let's see how we can mobilize favor. If it is possible. And Esther revealed to us here, one of the ways of mobilizing favor. He says, by fasting. You see why those who don't fast, most of the things that happen for, to others and for others don't happen for them. He said, go and fast for me for three days. Myself and my maiden, we also fast. He said, I will go unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Because if you go, when you are not invited, you will perish. But the woman knew that there was something about favor 
that breaks protocols and commands the allegiance of even the greatest of the nobles. And in chapter 5, verse 1 to 3, hear what happened. Please help me. He said, Then, no, chapter 5, from verse 1, from verse 1 to 3. Now it came to pass on the third day after the fast, he said that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house and the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gates of the house. And it was so when the king saw Esther, the queen standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight and the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand so Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter now the reason the king responded like this was because the king found what favor otherwise he would have done like this and her head would have left her head her neck but he stretched the scepter she came is a sign of approval and the king said unto her this is what blew my head unless this is a spell then this is foolishness too foolish for a king hear what happened what will thou queen esther that means what do you want you know your word is law and so nobles don't speak carelessly because their integrity hinges on their utterances before esther answered he said what is your request before esther answered he said it shall be given you that is stupidity for a king because you don't know what she will ask and the king didn't stop there he now went further and said even if it is half of my kingdom that means if you want to become a co-king I'm willing to give you what happened you know what that conclusion gives me favor is a spell a man will defy his wisdom a man will defy his training a man will defy his own laws if there's favor on your life have you not seen people before that say i don't do this but i don't know why i'm doing it because favor is on your life when favor comes men will break their own laws break their own principles break their own wisdom just to make sure what you are looking for you get it how can you ask somebody a question the person you have not asked you are willing to give half of your kingdom what makes you who you are you want to share and become equal with that person that's the power of favor when god wants a man to be impactful he puts favor on his life that favor is what gives him encounter that brings him into inspiration that makes him stand out that favor is what empowers him to break protocol and command the allegiance of men and trust me you will need the allegiance of men to make impact anything that only you can do is not worth it go and check even Jesus needed men. The son of God, the creator of the world. If there is no synergy, if there is no human support, that thing is too small for God to have time for it. Anything you want to do that is worthwhile must require men from time immemorial. David was anointed king. But the Bible said daily men came to David until his host became like the host of God. So the reason David was mighty was because there was a favor on his life that commanded kings, generals, and warriors. These men loved David so much that they were willing to die for him. David said, I desire to drink water from the well that is in the sepulchre of Rachel. And three soldiers didn't ask him because they know the military intelligence will not grant permission. It's too risky. It is a suicide mission. But in order to please David, this is not part of their purpose. This is just David's craving. They went out of their way, put their lives in jeopardy, broke through the garrison of the Philistine, went and drew water, and fought through that same garrison and brought the water to David. Even David knew that that was suicide. And he knew it would be an error to drink it. He said, this is their blood. For these men have put their lives in jeopardy. He poured it out as an oblation. You don't need to manipulate people find favor when favor comes on your life people will die to see you smile don't waste your time see we are in a different kingdom our laws are different the people in the world can go and read 48 laws of power and manipulate people we don't manipulate people we come with a spell called favor and so people don't know why 
they look at you and they just feel that Kai, you need a car. You didn't complain. They go out of their way, mobilize people, gather money and get a car. See, that's what the people in the world don't understand. They don't know that we are sons of light. They look at you and they say they are brainwashing people. Do you think you are more intelligent than those who come to our churches? You must be deluded to think so. If we took a sense of here this evening, you'll be shocked. There are military officers here. There are doctors here. There are businessmen here. There are consultants here. As we are seated here. If you hear the people who are here, if God doesn't talk through you, you will even be afraid to address them. We have young and we have old. Some persons are over 70 here. If it is experience, they've seen everything. If it is about vibrance, youthfulness, there are people here who are very agile. And to double it, this is the East. Where all wisdom dwell. And then somebody stands up, he carries money and put on the altar. And then you are sitting somewhere, you say they have brainwashed them. Are you not foolish? Are you more qualified than those sitting down? There is something happening. They understand the covenant. As they are doing it, they are buying favor for themselves too. And the reason what you are doing is working is but there's also favor on your life. It's a transaction. And the Bible said, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. He said, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. When God wants to shift you, he gives you favor. But you must know how to harness it. And this, this short story we read showed us three ways of getting favor. Number one, he said, by waiting on the Lord. Do you see why you don't sprint in the kingdom by running, but by waiting? He said, they that wait upon the Lord, they renew their strength. They mount up with wings like the eagles. He said, when they run, they will not be weary. When they walk, they will not faint. So the way we accelerate in the kingdom is not by running, it's by waiting. Because when you wait, fragrances come upon your life. Esther taught us that. He said, go and wait before the Lord for three days. When they waited, she showed us the second thing. She wore her regalia. She didn't show up naked. Many persons, after waiting upon the Lord, they threw away what God has given to them. Listen, there are things God has given you. You have a talent. You have a skill. You have a grace. In the day you require favor, make sure you wear your full garment. Don't come naked. Some persons have waited, but they threw their gifts away. They are trying to use another man's weapon. Esther knew. After waiting, she wore her full apparel. What is your apparel? If it is jokes, in the day when you require favor, make sure you crack your best joke. If it is, if it is dancing, in the day when you require it, make sure you wear your dancing shoes. Don't come without your apparel. Christians don't know this. And that's why Jesus speaking, he said, the children of the world are in their generation wiser than the children of the kingdom. They show up and say, if it will happen, it will happen. There is a protocol. Always make sure you are clothed for the occasion. Esther was clothed. And number three, she was rightly positioned. She didn't run into the court and say, I have favor. She stood where she ought to stand. Don't break protocols. You are not the one to break it. It's God that breaks it. If you come and say, I have favor, and you break protocols, you will attract this favor to yourself. There are many persons, God gives opportunity for their generation to hear them, and they start insulting their generation. Arrogance comes in. You have missed your place. There are many persons, God gives them favor with great men. They start trivializing it. They say, come to work by 8. It comes by 10. I'm sorry. Ah, after a while, the favor will win. They look at a man who should be their father but because of favor he's hugging him and saying my friend the next thing he will come ah, okay, how far? Ah. you will discover that the access you once had you will lose it you will cry you will weep you will not have it again because many corrupt the favor that god has put on their lives esther came with favor but she stood where she supposed to, she was supposed to stand it was the king that beckoned her if you do these three things the fragrance of favor on your life will be on the increase and as that favor is growing you keep breaking protocols you keep commanding the allegiance of men including kings and finally what favor does is that favor engenders wealth transfer 
there are two ways you find wealth transfer in the kingdom one of them is by favor in exodus 12 36 he said god gave favor to the israelites and they spoiled the egyptians the egyptians mastered them for more than 400 years suddenly something came on their lives and those who had gold gave gold to them those who had money gave money to them that's why i say favor indeed is a spell and they took the wealth of egypt and left with it you will need a lot of favor if you must prosecute your destiny and when that favor comes one of the ways it will show is that resources will gravitate in your direction resources and sometimes it's even the resources of the gentiles it will move it to you move it so that you can sponsor what they hid in darkness god will bring those treasures of darkness and launch them to your coffers because you need to fulfill destiny i was preaching the other day and i said without money you can't fulfill destiny somebody stood up and said no jesus fulfill destiny with power I looked at him I said you are a child when you wake up you want when you grow you understand Jesus fulfilled destiny with power <laughs> so when they went to buy food they went to buy food with power <laughs> they all these young people just excited talking things and say maybe you have never read Luke chapter 8 verse 2 and 3 even women were giving money to Jesus he collected it He said, no, he's the son of God. He doesn't need money. Angels will come and do the work. <laughs> Better have enough favor that will bring resources to you. Sir, hear this. If you, basically, the host said, anointing without money is annoyance. They say, if you don't get there, you won't know. This conference happening, very soon, the power of God will move. People will be slain. Causes will break. Healings will take place. You say, yes, God is working here with power. Sir, there's a generator running for four hours. That generator doesn't run on power. It runs on diesel. <laughs> when people are young, they just want to talk. Somebody will go and write a three ties, trying to counter. Meanwhile, even the pen he's using to write that three ties was bought with money. The laptop is typing on top. It's bought with money. It was it, when people are naive. He gave favor to the Israelites. They spoiled the Egyptian. I don't know what God has given to you, but if it is global, sir, you will need money. And in the name of Jesus, the favor you require for the resources to sponsor it to come is released in the name of Jesus. I don't know what God has called you to do, but if it will affect your generation, sir, you need men. The favor that commands the allegiance of men. I release it upon you now. As I'm talking to you now, there's a service going on in Abuja. I didn't need to think how it will run because I have men. If I didn't have men, I either would have left Enugu this morning or I better be bilocated. And I don't know how to bilocate at will yet. Mind the word yet because a day must come. <laughs> you need men, and if you must fulfill destiny, sir, at some point, protocols must break for you. The favor you require for these things to begin to work in your life, receive it now. people making impact they will tell you the only people who will counter these things are those who are doing nothing and I told you yesterday there's a place where they hang it's on comment box like gazelle and they are writing they are writing and then three people will come and like and then they say yes they have said their mind who heard you <laughs> does it not shock you that with all you know God has not allowed you to speak to your generation it's to humble your heart when spirits make other people talk, they vocalize it. They now go and hijack it and bring it to their platform 
and they are writing to come tie something that somebody spoke a spirit blew on it and the whole generation is talking about it you carry it and bring it to your tiny space where there are 50 people talking does it not shock you that the power pushing that thing is superior to this thing you are doing because protocols are being bent men men's allegiance are being commanded resources are being mobilized because of favor wait on the lord be always kitted with your apparel and stand in your place and see how favor will decorate you change your life and make you become the opium of your generation i prophesy over someone the forces of favor rest upon you now welcome to anakazo watch tv anakazo watch tv be a great team and work on life transforming messages that will bring you into realms of divine encounter with the world of truth please don't forget to subscribe like and share our videos god bless you